And so before I came into the class, I always go into the, to the NTI, which is the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament, which is a very powerful uh, channel book that's perfect for opening up and getting the message. So I asked, what would be the message for the group tonight to start out with uh, before we go into the course of love? So when I opened it up, um, what I heard, or what I read opened up to this. I've spoken of this to you before, but it cannot be overemphasized. Cute, juicy course of love class. Right <laughs> right wow, that's it's, right there. it's right there in the book. Yeah. It's, right, it's right there. Juice upon juice upon juice. That's, that's, a, lot kind of juice. Of that's a lot of juice. <laughs> 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 okay. okay. The first good. the first message to the group is it is, and it can't be overemphasized, it is the desire that you allow which leads you. Mm. It is the desire mm. that you allow which is leading you. Mm. So you're being led mm -hmm. by the desires you are allowing. Mm. Oh. That, that deep? Yes. One more the, time. Okay, you are be, it is the desire <laughs> that you allow which leads you. Mm. So, so I am being led by the desires that I allow. I'm being led by the desires I allow. Yes. Earl, to allow it, don't you have to accept it? To allow it, you can sometimes allow something in order to learn how to accept it. Because there have been many things that I've allowed in my life that I haven't necessarily thought I accepted, mm -hmm. me personally. Mm -hmm. So to me, allowing mm -hmm. you to walk in the door isn't the same as accepting you. <laughs> right. I accept you after I allow you in the door. Yeah. <laughs> then right. we start working on the acceptance. So that's that's why when you say you're going to love someone, you got to allow the love, mm. first of all. And so then it says, right. and so juicy course of love class, right, it's right here in the book, especially David. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that special? <laughs> <laughs> I want to copy that one. I, 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 thought, I, I thought you wrote this book. And then it says, and so if you want to be led in a straight line without delay, you must allow the true desire to lead mm. without distraction. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Okay, cool. That means stay fully focused on mm. one desire now. This is a message that, that I pulled for the class. Stay focused on one desire now. <sighs> there, that is to ride out as a conqueror bent on conquest. The second seal, because this is the part of, of uh, 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 an interpretation of Revelation, the second seal represents that which is not true but seems true within the mind. This is the symbol of fear hidden by the mask of ferociousness. Mm -hmm. Your fear is hidden by the mask of ferociousness. Mm -hmm. This image is only an image within the mind. Its reality is not. Through the process of looking at the mask of ferociousness, this image shall be let go. When I look at my anger, then I can let it go. When I look mm. at my jealousy, I can let it go. When I look at my depression, I can let it go. When I look at my grievance, exactly. I can let it go. When I look at my lack, I can let it go. Exactly. So most of us are already mm -hmm. doing part one. <laughs> 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 we already looking at our lack. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, <wouldn't be. laughs> I think somebody missed the joke. <laughs> <laughs> through the, I say it again. This is our message now. Through the process of looking at it, through the process of looking at it, the image shall be let go. The third seal represents judgment, which maintains, which maintains the illusion, which maintains which maintains the illusion of the world, judgment. Mm. It is judgment that separates. Mm. 
It's judgment that makes separateness seem real. So now, to open the third seal, the scales of judgment must be laid aside. Take a breath. So the first seal is to understand that it's the, it's the desires that you allow that lead you. And to be focused on one desire now. That's one unlock. Yes. The second seal to your happiness, you unlock that through the process of looking at it, then you can let it go. Pretending it's not there won't get it. Yeah. The third seal is laying the scales of judgment aside. Hopefully. So the way that I lay the scales of judgment aside easiest is to recognize I didn't create you. <laughs> and since I didn't create you, I Ooh, can't judge you. Nice. Uh, if nice. I bake a cake, I got a right to judge it. You know, as my creation, mm -hmm. I can judge it. Whether it's a good cake or a bad cake was my cake, I can judge it. Fair the enough. cake can't judge itself. Okay. Because the cake didn't make itself. Mm -hmm. So the cake's just sitting up there wait, waiting to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> it's not judging. No, you can't bite me, but you can. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get ready to eat some dessert. The dessert don't say, I don't like you, Earl. You can't eat me, but you know, this other person can. So, so you judging yourself is like the cake judging itself. Mm. But you can judge what you've made, sure. and that's why we judge our life, mm -hmm. the perception of our life, wow. because we know we're the one that's making mm. the perception of our life and the experience of our life, so we judge it as good or bad. Interesting. Mm -hmm. You didn't create you, so you can't judge you, but you're going to judge what you think you've made. Mm -hmm. mm. So how can I tell the difference between what, when I'm seeing what I've made and when I've seen what the Creator made? If I'm judging it, it's what I've made. Mm. Nice. Good way to remember that. That's good. Yeah, if you're judging it, it's, your, it's something you made up. Yep. Very good. Okay. Wow. Love that. Okay. Fourth seal represents death, which is the symbol of the illusion of separateness. For life cut off from life can only be death. So death is a fitting symbol of that which cannot be true. So the fourth seal to happiness comes from letting go of your belief that what you really are dies. Wow. It's hard to be happy if you think you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite true. <laughs> I'll put it this way. Imagine how happy you would be if you knew you couldn't die. Mm -hmm. Imagine how you would spend this day mm. if you not only knew you couldn't die, but none of your loved ones could. Mm -hmm. Look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And you immediately get some idea of how much happier you would be. And the fifth seal represents the options of fear and trust. In the moment of not knowing, this is the choice that must be made. If you in a moment of not knowing, then you have two options. If it's something you don't, you, you don't know about right now, that you're confused about right now, <laughs> then you have two <laughs> options. You have the option of fear and the option of trust. Mm. Those are the two options you got right now with the situation is you don't know what the hell is going on right now. You got the option of be experiencing fear about that situation or in that situation, or you have the option of trusting that everything is for your own best interest and that you don't know your own best interest, but you know that only love is real in that situation. How do you turn that around when you know you're going down the path that you don't want to go down? Well, the way that you, the way that you, <coughs> you change your mind about it by, first of all, admitting to yourself that you don't like the way you feel now. Right. And then the next step is for you to tell yourself, since you don't like the way you feel now, hope that you are wrong about right. the way you see everything. And then you say, I want another way to look at this. Yeah. And then you say, perhaps there, oh, I forgot. At least I can decide I don't like the way I feel now. And so I hope I am wrong. I said that. I want another way to look at this. Perhaps there's another way to look at this. Right. What can I lose by asking? Right. Then I ask for another way to look at it. That's, those are the steps <clears throat> when you see yourself going the wrong way. I got the option of fear or trust. 
So you must choose to trust that which you do not know, or you must choose to fear what you do not know. Like you don't know me, so you got two options. You don't know me and you can trust me, or you don't know me and you can fear me. That's the option we have. We can either trust what we don't know or fear what we don't know. Which one does the average human do? Fear yeah. what they do not know. That's why if the alien showed up, we try to blast them away. <laughs> <laughs> we fear what we don't know. <laughs> you know. So when can you tell when your partner, friend, lover, uh, uh, mate is a stranger to you? When you don't know. When you don't know them because you know you don't know them because right now you're afraid. Mm -hmm. right. So when you're most upset with somebody, it's when you least know them mm -hmm. or think you know them. Mm -hmm. So you can't be afraid of, a, you, 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 you won't be afraid of someone who's not a stranger that you trust. Mm -hmm. But you will be afraid of somebody that's a stranger because the same as angry. So even in a relationship, when you're having a quarrel or misperception and you're angry, that's the moment the two of you are strangers to each other. So you have two choices in that situation. You can trust or you can fear. You can trust in the love that's behind which is going on between you right now, or you can just be afraid. Trust, fear. So that was the immediate, it says in this choice is everything that follows given. Mm, I'm glad I missed that last. Okay, so <laughs> if you've decided to trust, then Everything that you need to trust will be given to you. So first you decide to trust, and then everything that justifies the trust, supports the trust, makes the trust happen, will be, I said, given to you. I didn't say earned. I said it will be given to you. If you decide for fear, then everything that follows that can make you be afraid will be given to you. Hmm. All right, that was our message before we even get wow. into the Course of Love. What you think about that? That was great. Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. It's, it's, it's an incredible wow. book. It's called, it's, uh, it's called The Holy Spirit's Interpretation of the New Testament. It's a channel book, but it's one of the best books I've ever read. And it's, all of it says the same thing, but it's doing it in a new way. Um, so we are on, uh, in the Course of Love, we're on the, the, the chapter called Being Present. <laughs> And I'm going to read through a couple of the paragraphs. And then our purpose is to get in this mind. And then anything that anybody should ask, for any reason, I'm going to answer it from this perspective. I'm not going to answer it from the perspective of a person who's in their story. So on page, uh, we're going to be on page 250, uh, paragraph 30-7. It says, the world as you perceive it is built around the foundation of fear. The world that you see is built around the foundation of fear, a fear that stemmed from the belief in finite life, in being born into a body and dying to the body. So the world that we're looking at has a foundation in fear that comes from the belief that we were born in a body and we're going to die in a body. Anybody, anybody arguing with that? Anybody no. say, probably understanding that, that? That these are that's the foundation of the fear of the world is our destructibility and the fact that we think we can be hurt. That's why we don't trust people because we think they might hurt us in some way. They may do something that's not for our own best interest. But if you truly knew you were an infinite being that could not die and was only love, you wouldn't even spend five minutes trying to worry about whether or not you could trust somebody because you know the only thing that could possibly happen to you would be something for your own best interest. Mm -hmm. That's deep. Mm -hmm. If I trusted everything in my life was for my own best interest, then I wouldn't have a problem trusting people mm -hmm. because whatever happens would be for my own best interest. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So if it looked like they jipped wow. me, it would be for my own best interest. If yeah. it looked like mm -hmm. they loved me good, it would be for my own best interest. Somehow or another, oh. it would be serving some purpose that would be making me more aware of who I really am as a spiritual being. Uh. 
That's deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's very deep. Love that. Mm -hmm. That's very deep. That's very deep. Mm -hmm. the, the, the person that's trying the hardest to trust people and don't trust people is usually the person that's mm -hmm. the most untrustworthy. So anybody that's trying to put you through the ringer to see if they can trust you are revealing that they are untrustworthy. Mm -hmm. So they just reveal themselves to you. Bingo, gotcha. Because if you knew the truth and you could really see me, you'd know I was trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So the mere fact that you was trying to figure it out is a red flag for the pee. Because <laughs> <laughs> if you could see and you could feel and you were in touch mm -hmm. with the truth, you would know that who I really am is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. So you're the one that's not trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Right. Woo! Mm. 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 Nice. Mm. 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 He says, the person who knows, truly knows, the simplest truth of the identity of the self no longer lives in a dualistic position with God, but in a monistic state with God. The difference is in realizing relationship with the infinite instead of relationship with the finite, which is the same as saying relationship with life as opposed to relationship with matter. Now that's deep. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so do I have a relationship with the life that's in you? Or do I have a relationship with your bodies? Mm. The life that is in you is infinite. The body is finite. So I'm going to have a relationship with God when I have a relationship with you that's infinite, that's based on who you really are as spiritual beings instead of who you appear to be as bodies. So how can I, and I said this before, and how can I tell whether I want to be with this person for their body, or how can I tell if I'm going to be with this person for their infinite being in their mind? Well, if they didn't have a body, would you want to be with them? Mm. If you were trapped on a deserted island in the middle of the Pacific, mm -hmm. and you had to be with this person's mind, and they didn't have a body, you just had to deal with their mind, their conversation all day, would you kill yourself <laughs> the, first day, the first week you're on the island? <laughs> <laughs> wow. that, that, that immediately will get you in touch with who you're really in a relationship with. Because I've been so fascinated, I've been so fascinated with a person's body that I was willing to overlook their mind. If they just would be quiet, I'd be okay. Because I'm totally fascinated with your body. So if you just don't talk, I could have a good time. Because then I could join with my fantasies in uninterrupted bliss. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're not there. You're not saying anything. I got my fantasy about you. Your body is available. I can act it out. Oh, what a great relationship. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if I was on a deserted island with you, would I really want to hear your conversation for the rest of my life? Mm. Would your conversation be an interesting, powerful, mind-expanding? And there are people in my life that I can, pay, I can think that with and go, yeah. I sure enough could be on a deserted island with them without a body. Yeah. Because their mind fascinates me. What we're able to talk about fascinates me. What they talk about fascinates me. The concepts and ideas that they introduce to me fascinate me. Yeah, I could be with them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We could have us some good mind sex. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, that's where it's located anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Break it. <laughs> that's the only place you've it's ever true. had is in your head. Yeah, it's true. Okay. <laughs> so, just think about the people you're in close relationship with now, some people you're in close, intimate relationship now, and, and ask yourself, if you didn't have access to their body, and that's not just sexually, that's just to go and visit them, hang out, whatever, would you want to be around them if they didn't have something physical that you all were doing together that you enjoy? Mm. Whether that's you going hiking, but your bodies are together going up the side of the mountain, but if y'all didn't have bodies going to the side of the mountain together, would you want to be with that person? Would you want to listen to what they got to say? Because being in a relationship means that you are agreeing to experience the result of that person's thinking with them. When you say you want to be in a relationship, when I say I want to be in a relationship with her, I'm saying I want to experience the result of how she believes with her because I'm in a relationship with her. So the result of how she's thinking, I'm going to have to deal with. Like, for instance, if a person gets a DWDUI mm -hmm. and you're in a relationship with them, they, ha they got that because of their thinking. So you are the one that's having to bail them out or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you are actually having to deal with the results of that person's decisions with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
That's what you're deciding when you say you want a partnership or a relationship. You're no longer going to experience the results of your thoughts alone. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> that was another idea that I saw three of the house. <laughs> That's deep. Okay. We'll go to the next paragraph. Any, any, any thoughts about any of this that I've said so far? Yes. So when you start to have a relationship with someone and you're experiencing your thoughts together, then uh, what do you think about the guilt that could be associated with the negative thoughts you might be experiencing together? Well, the first thing is to realize that the guilt that you're feeling is the instant proof that you're incorrectly evaluating your negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. so, so guilt is always the way for you to know you're thinking incorrectly. So the mm -hmm. first thing you do is start there. I'm feeling guilty, mm -hmm. I'm seeing it wrong. So even if it's a so-called negative thought, which simply means a thought you think you prefer not to think, <laughs> then feeling guilty about it is unnecessary. What's important is to say, I see this thought, if you got to say anything else, you can say, I see this thought as a mistake. Because the Course teaches that we don't like to make mistakes. And mistakes are unattractive to us. We've been programmed to believe mistakes are unattractive. So a person would rather say they feel guilty then admit they made a mistake. People will say, I feel guilty like that. Oh, I feel so guilty about what I did. Oh, I ate that piece of cake. I feel so guilty. Oh, I said so. We, people don't. No, there's nobody has a problem saying they feel guilty. That's no big deal. But how many people do you do you hear really honestly say, I made a mistake with my marriage. I made a mistake with my ah. money. I made a mistake with my body. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a... Nobody wants to admit everything they did wasn't one big hell of a mistake. But they're glad to say, I'm so guilty. I'm so bad. I'm so beautiful. That's why I did that. So the court says, upgrade it to a mistake and your mind would automatically yes. want to correct it because you've already programmed your mind to yes. correct mistakes. So mistake. if you call it a wow. mistake, you automatically wow. enter the state of mind that will heal the problem mm. because you've already been programmed. I don't want to make mistakes. I want to do it right. I want to do it correctly. So the minute you say mistake, your mind kicks in without you even having to worry about it. But the average person doesn't want to do that. They much rather think it's a sin. They much rather think it's something they couldn't help. <sighs> <laughs> okay, yes. And that's a beautiful solution because if you find someone who's lying to you and telling stories and you're mirror to them, well, you're a liar and you tell stories. Well, then that's a good way to know if you should be around them because... Well, if you're really them. smart, you won't even tell them you know they're lying. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. See, if you're really smart, you don't even respond to the ego at all. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. All you do is just take a mental note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That's all you do, right. because, yeah. because if you attack them, then they're going to stop talking. And it's much better for them to keep on talking and keep on talking and keep on lying and keep on talking and keep on lying and keep on talking without being afraid. Because then you get more and more knowledge about what's going on and what you need to do. That's why even if your partner is saying something to you that's the last thing you want to hear, if it's some way you could breathe and not attack them, they'll continue to tell you the stuff that you need to know mm -hmm. that they hide from you, but they tell everybody else. Mm -hmm. But nobody's going to communicate with you if you're always going off on them. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard, okay? I'm not saying that it's not, you know, if your husband came home and let's say you believe in monogamy, and your husband came home and said, baby, I just got through with all the Bronco cheerleaders. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I was really appealing tonight. <laughs> uh, then there's a part of you that's programmed that might want to go completely bonkers, yeah. right? But if you're a conscious being, you handle it two ways. If you're a conscious yeah. being, if you're a conscious being, you're a conscious being, you'll say this. Did it make you happy? Did you enjoy it? Did it make you feel more connected? Yes. I'm happy for it. <laughs> now, in case y'all not to the level that you can be happy for somebody else's happiness, anybody here like that? <laughs> All right. Then the next thing would be to breathe, and if you could, try to refrain uh -huh. from attacking, even if you say, let me breathe here in a minute. Let me take a walk. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me go back to the another. Let me get. The, let me go around the block. Or uh, you know, because I really don't want to attack you. But right now I'm feeling angry and I'm feeling like I want to attack. And I do that. Okay. So you can 
attempt not to attack. Now, don't forget why you are attempting not to attack them. It just won't make sense to you. Mm -hmm. The reason why you're attempting not to attack them is because you want them to continue to feel safe enough to communicate everything yes. they're doing to you. Love that. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because if the person wants to hook up with the cheerleaders, they would be the kind of person that would hook up with the cheerleaders whether you knew it or not. Yeah. So them not telling you is not the same as they wouldn't hook up with the cheerleader. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if so, what you want is them to feel safe enough to say, "I hooked up with the cheerleaders." Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's what you want to hear. You know what I'm saying? So, but you might not be that advanced, and if you're not <laughs> that advanced, and before you know it, you have reacted. You know, and, and, and their head is over here, and their arm is over there. <laughs> <laughs> Blood stains all over the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it might mean you have a, mi a misperception. <laughs> a messy one. Yeah, a messy misperception. In that case, that's where forgiveness comes in. <laughs> right? That's why all these books teach about forgiveness, being able to let it go, being able to see it as your call for love being able to see it as your request for another way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why it says when you're angry and upset, you need to see it as a call for love. So if you do go off, that's just your call for love. Mm -hmm. You are afraid, and you feel like you're going to lose, and you lost it. That was just your call for love. That was a mistake to attack. And the only afterward message is, try not to do that again. That's it. Right. I, tried, I tried what Earl said, I hit him upside the head with the bat. Okay, now... <laughs> Uh, first thing I need to do is understand that I allowed my desire to kill them to leave me. Which is part of what we said at the very beginning. <laughs> that you must be aware that your desire that you allow is going to lead you. Right? And so you forgive yourself and say, the next time I'll try to do better. I'll be in a position, which means, which doesn't mean you gotta, you gotta necessarily love the fact that they went to be with the cheerleaders. It's not even about the cheerleaders. Right. It's about you attacking yourself or you not attacking yourself. You feeling peace or you giving your peace away. Right. That's what we're talking about. Okay. Now, in terms of the form of the relationship, y'all can sit down and discuss whether y'all got the kind of relationship that cheerleader and quarterbacks is okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's just between y'all. The form don't even matter. That's what everybody caught up in. And the form is what matters least. It doesn't matter if you're monogamous, it doesn't matter if you're polyamorous, it doesn't matter if you're open, it doesn't matter if you're closed, it doesn't matter if you're gay, it doesn't matter if you're straight. Because all those are labels that are, that are totally centered around the idea that you separate, we separate bodies, which is not what we are anyway. So anything that's based on that idea is ultimately a lie anyway, and it's always temporary. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're caught up in the stuff that don't even last. Which is really funny. We're feeling right. guilty right. about what we do in a body that won't even be here 500 years from now. When nobody even remembered it was here. You don't pass by a cemetery and go, that joker went out on his wife in 1920. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't even, you know what I'm saying? That dude might not even enjoy his whole life for something that nobody else even knows or remembers or cares about today. And that's what we do all the time. We're so self-absorbed, we really think people are walking around <laughs> thinking about what you're doing. Isn't that so funny? You know, I've heard people say, well, I didn't do that because what would people think? You know, nothing. <laughs> you have like a one-minute conversation yeah, for that. entertainment purposes. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and enjoy your life more because I guarantee you nobody cares about it as much as you. <laughs> nobody cares about your life as much as you in the body. God does. Matter of fact, God cares more than we do. Our creator cares more than we do. Because our creator isn't judging what we're doing as best as much as we are. Mm. Breathe with me, please. Wow. <laughs> uh, to breathe again. Oh, <laughs> that was it. That was spooky enough. <laughs> Did that make sense to everybody about if you attack them, they won't want to talk to you? Because anybody can't see the, the logic behind that. Mm -hmm. If you really want to know the truth mm -hmm. with anybody you know, mm -hmm. let them talk. Mm -hmm. Don't say you a liar. <laughs> Don't say you're lying to me. 
-hmm. You act from the awareness if you know the truth of the truth that you know. And even if you wanted to call them on it, try to do it in such a way that they don't feel attacked. Mm -hmm. So that they'll continue, no, remember the purpose, to get them to continue to communicate. It's not about whether it's bad or good. It's I want to be aware. <laughs> I want to know what's going on. And I've had many people say stuff to me. I've, had, I've talked to many people who I knew didn't like me, who I knew had said things about me and was looking right in my face. And talk, it, it, there's a line in the Course of Miracles that says the Holy Spirit will always let you know what you need to know. Mm. Mm -hmm as long as you won't use it to attack. Mm. So I've had people right. send me emails by mistake that let me know something that they were doing that I needed to know. Mm. That's, one way or another, Spirit's going to let you know what you need to know. Mm. I'm telling you, it will. it will. If you don't attack, everything you need to know will be revealed to you. So then I knew from the email what the person was really saying, so it wasn't even like a projection. Mm. It's like I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading it, you know. Oh, this is how you feel about me, for real, <clears throat> other than what you're saying to my face. Wow. They never knew it. Mm. So I could continue to be aware and not attack them. <laughs> mm. I'm telling you, the truth is, See, that's the programming and the truth. The story and the truth. Okay. So let's go to another paragraph if you don't have anything else that you'd like to say. Uh, this huge difference is easily overlooked and rarely seen as the key that unlocks the door to universal consciousness, which is what, un what unlocks the door to universal consciousness? Uh, being present. Now, let me give you a definition of consciousness that'll make that a lot less abstract. Would you like that? Yes. Yep. yes. Your level of consciousness is your level of interpretation of what's going on. Mm. How you are interpreting it is your level of consciousness. If I'm sitting in here and I'm going, I interpret you as being spiritual beings having a human experience that's creating your reality, that's created by God, that's my level of consciousness. If I'm interpreting you as just different people of different races sitting in this chair, in this room that's separate from me, that's not connected to me at all, then that's my level of consciousness. So your level of consciousness is simply the level you are interpreting everything that's happening to you on. And there are basically two levels, which is I'm interpreting this as if I'm a victim of it, or I'm interpreting this as if I'm responsible for the way I see it. Mm. Those are the two basic levels of consciousness, which is fear and love. Mm -hmm. And those can change throughout the day, right? What's that? <laughs> <Your levels laughs> of oh, yes. Oh, yes. Your level, of, your, your level of interpretation totally changes throughout the day according to how much fear and upset okay. you feel about what's going on. But what's important is to make sure that you never forget that you're making yourself feel the way you feel, and you're the one that's choosing how you want to interpret it. Okay, so I'm really choosing my level of consciousness by what I want to use as my interpretation. In other words, if I go, I'm going to, what would the Course of Love say about this, then I'm interpreting it from this level of consciousness. If I'm going with my story of what the world says, she just, he just, she just, he just treat me like that because I'm black. See, that's the world's level of yeah. interpretation. So I'll be constantly meeting people who will be racist. Because my perspective of the world, my interpretations are based on I'm looking for racism, so I will find what I am looking for. You see what I'm saying? So, but if I go, this is just a call for love, I'm really looking in my own eyes, there's really me and a white person's body. Then we're gonna we're gonna connect automatically. Whether I ever say that to you or not to your face, we're gonna you're gonna like me. It's going to be something about me that feels okay. You won't even understand. Because I'm using the truth. We're one. See what I mean? Yes. So that's why you can't use your perceptions right. to prove whether or not what I'm saying is true. Because your perceptions are going to validate what you believe. Okay. So you can't say that what we're saying is true or not true based on your past experience. Because your past experience is based on your past beliefs. And your perceptions will always witness to your beliefs. That's why they fool us so. 
That's why you can say, well, men really aren't any good. Well, that's because that's the only type of man you have perceived. So therefore, it makes sense you would think all men are like that. It's more like all men you perceive are like that, would be the best way to put it. Any kind of person you can think of exists. Any kind of person that you can think of exists. Any kind of person that you can think of exists. Kind of think of exists. Just ride an airplane. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I don't care how way out you are. I don't care what your imagination is. I don't care what your belief system is. There's somebody else that thinks similar. Mm -hmm. Just go to the internet. Come up with the wildest thing you can think of. Unusual people that do all kind of crazy stuff that you never could imagine with plants, animals, and cars. <laughs> dot com. <laughs> and there they are. Yeah. And it's thousands of them. I'm telling you. That's what I love about the internet. It completely dispels the idea that you are original. Or that you are alone in anything that you're into. And it's impossible for two people who like the same thing to feel guilty about what they do together. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you feel a lot of guilt, then you are doing things alone in an environment that's not conducive to that thing. Can you say that again? Whenever you feel guilty about something you've done with someone, then you don't really recognize that you and that person are the same. Right. Because you can't feel, like, that's why criminals hang out together. Yeah. They'll sit around and talk, well, let me tell you about the bank I robbed. Let me tell you about that house I broke into. Did you, what kind of burglar alarm? Well, you gotta make sure it's this certain now you can, they talking to each other about how they rob people. And nobody's upset about it. They don't feel, why? Because they're the same. So if you really wanna feel innocent, stop doing things with people who are constantly opposing you. <laughs> And who feel completely different from the way you do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's because the guilt is coming from feeling alone in it. That's why people can go to an AA meeting. For instance, it's, that's why they feel innocent. Because they're yeah. sitting in a room full of people right. that are trying to accomplish the same goal. That's why we should feel innocent and with each other. We should say the most outrageous things to each other. Because we're supposed to be around all these people who are open-minded to trying to get a better way of looking at things as a more metaphysical, spiritual perspective. We should be able to talk and say anything with each other because we're supposed to be the same. How can I tell when people in the room are feeling most joined in the same? By the level of communication, laughter, and joy. People came in here today feeling very one with each other. You, mm -hmm. you can tell by the energy and the joy and the laughter of the communication. Mm -hmm. We feeling separate, we quiet. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people be really talking and, and sharing and laughing until I come. You <laughs> <laughs> make me feel so bad. Oh. <laughs> 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 you just command a presence. <laughs> That's right. I make everybody want to shut up or stop talking to me. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm taking it slow so that we can maybe like let it in our bodies. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then it says, um, uh, I love this, this huge difference is easily overlooked and rarely seen as the key that unlocks the door to universal consciousness, which means being present. There is no <clears throat> being and no present inherent in matter. In matter, being must be attached to form. See, some stuff sounds right. abstract, but it's really not. Like that sentence right. in matter, being must be attached to form. Okay, we are in matter. We have a being, but we are in matter. So our being is what? Attached to form. My being is attached to this human form because I am in matter. Got it? Got it. Right, okay. We are all beings, but we all seem to have bodies. So we are beings in matter attached to form. Yeah. All right, then it says, um, that's the problem with the truth. It's so obvious that we're tempted to go, I don't understand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like until right. I broke that down, you might have came, what do you, what do you mean? But then you saw it was just so obvious. We're in matter. We have beings. We're attached to this form. And hope, sometimes hoping somebody else will be. 
right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. We, some people are working out tonight, so somebody will want their form. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh-huh. I, I hate to break it to you, <laughs> but that's why a lot of people are in the gym right now. Because they know they're in a world where people are more attracted to your form than your mind. <laughs> it's sort of like I'm getting better bait. <laughs> I'm making sure my worm works, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> of course, my worm works. <laughs> I will never admit that to the whole internet. My worm don't work. <laughs> People who, don't, who believe in sin have a hard time laughing. <laughs> Humor is difficult to, for guilty minds. So, then, then the Course says, in the sense of time described by the world present, there is no infinitude, but only a vague concept of now. This is the key concept that I not only knew, but demonstrated. This is the legacy, the inheritance I left to you. This discourse may seem to have traveled far from words of love, words promised, and words given in truth. For no love is finite in nature. Mm-hmm. There, oh, this, this blew my mind when I first heard this. There is no mm. such thing as a love that ends. Mm. Love that. So anybody Ooh. you think you loved yeah. and it ended wasn't love. love. It was specialness. They were special to you for a while and it ended. Mm -hmm. Love never ends. 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 Specialness begins and ends. That's why you need to transmute your relationship from a special relationship based on beginnings and endings, even if the ending is the apparent so called death of the partner. That's still an ending. So love never ends. Specialness can end. So be aware of that. That's the difference between specialness and love. Specialness is, I love you, eh, don't love you no more. I love you, eh, now I don't love you no more. I love you, eh, I don't love you no more. All that stuff I did all my life, I had a lot of special relationships. I'm now attempting to have real love relationships. And I'm going to start with my special relationships and transform them to loving relationships. Why? Because the person I feel special with should be the person that I really want to treat the most loving. So I'd rather start with the person I'm attracted to, that I feel drawn to, that I'm making the most important person in my life. It would kind of make sense that would be the one I start to want to have the real deal with. It'll be easier, because I already want to treat you right. If, if, at least in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Until you don't act right. <laughs> now we got a whole different ball game here. I want you to work hard for my dysfunctional love. <laughs> you got to work for this love that's really messed up. Because <laughs> it's so conditional. See, I'm glad I got to the point I can laugh at my ego Mm -hmm. instead of feeling guilty when I hear about how it operates. See, when you're not, when you feel guilty, someone say, "Well, you don't really know what love really is." You just do. (laughs) (laughs) What you talking about, man? (laughs) You know, well, you should be laughing at that statement. It should be a hilarious statement. My love should tickle me. (laughs) You know, it's like, come on, right? Yeah. So the infinite love thing. The I'm infinite. just bringing this up. Okay, good. So you have a family, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you have a sister, mm-hmm. or whatever, that you know you should love, mm-hmm. but of course there's a special relationship there. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> that is somebody that I wouldn't want to choose to try to love first, because if I don't get along with her... No, I wouldn't. Is. I wouldn't pick the hardest person first. Okay. Pick the easiest person. Put, pick the easiest person first, and then you mm-hmm. get, get a chance to have that feeling of successes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. oh, I'm not, okay, successes. And, and this would have happened with the person that you had the hardest time with. You won't, it won't matter. You, you'll be so happy that they couldn't upset you anyway. 
So it really wouldn't even matter to you whether they was upset with you or not anymore. Because you okay. See, see, the only reason why other people bug us is we're miserable ourselves. <laughs> All right, so, 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 yeah, I, I, did everybody know that? That's, that's, the only, that's the only reason why people bug you now is because you're the one that's miserable. Okay, if, if I was totally, I'll put it this way, if I just got through eating a 10 course meal, could somebody really tempt me with a pizza? No. If I'm full, then I'm okay in the way it goes. But if I'm hungry, now they can control and manipulate me. You see, so if I'm really happy, I, you can't affect me if I'm truly joyful. Mm -hmm. So I don't care whether my mama changes, because I feel good. Oh, mama, you feel like crap. Well, one day you change your mind because you feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> because you feel like crap. Mm. I don't feel like crap. So you can feel like crap as long as you want to. So I'm not trying to change my mom anymore because she's not affecting my happiness, which was the only reason why I wanted to change in the first place, because I wasn't feel good about my mom. But I feel good. So who cares about how my mama feels? As a matter of fact, I'm a witness to my mama how good you can feel if you change your mind, mama. <laughs> Look at your son. Your son kicking it up. Maybe if you kicked it up, you would also be happy like your son. Mm -hmm. So I'm a witness to my mama that there's another way to be other than her sad way of being without trying to change her because I'm happy. But if you're miserable, you're trying to change everybody. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, when they change, I'll be happy. Finite love based on form and appearance, infinite love based on content. I'm really feeling good on the inside. That's the way I feel. That's my content. I'm connected to source. Nobody can bother me. Mm -hmm. Now, what appalls me personally is how far away from that I am. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm amazed at the little crap that I steal that bothers me during the day after I sit here and act all high. <laughs> or actually be half, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> so, I'm constantly being shocked at how I am not as far as I thought I was, mm -hmm. but I'm further than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I get, I, every day I see that. Yeah. Oh, man, you, somebody cut in front of you in traffic, you gave your piece away. So you can get out of denial about whether you Christ-like yet. <laughs> That's a little minor test. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. I can sit up here in this class and talk all the stuff in the world, but if I walk right out that door and somebody jaywalk and it freaks me out, I know mm -hmm. I haven't reached that level of consciousness that I'm totally whole and complete within myself mm -hmm. yet. So now I know who I need to work on. Mm -hmm. right. And so as long as, I'm, as long as I stay clear about who I need to work on, then I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So. I can't see my ego. I can't see my ego except through how I see another person's ego. That's how you see your ego is how you see another person's ego. What does that mean? It means you can only see my ego through your ego. If you see me as a selfish person, you are selfish. Mm. Because you could have only seen my selfishness through your selfishness. That's the way it works. So the minute I point out something in you that needs to be changed, the gift you gave me was you made me aware of what was in my own mind that needed to be corrected, and if I would take the time to have it corrected, then my life would change for the better. So I would even be dealing with you. You know, I'd be going, boy, she really, really selfish and doesn't take any responsibility for anything that happens to her. Oh, my God, I'm really, really selfish, and I don't take responsibility for anything that happens to me. Let me go study. Now, notice I didn't even call her up. I didn't even go to her and say, well, you should have done, you know, the minute you wake up, you go, oh, my God. She just made me aware that I'm the one that's closed-minded and narrow-minded. I said, I said it was my mama. That's really me. That's that part of me that's that way. Thank you, mama. And you ain't even going to talk to your mama. She's not, not even the problem at that point. You know you need to change your perception at that point. That's deep, you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if you, if you wanted to get out of denial about your own ego, you have a hundred times chances all day long because all day long, mm -hmm. everything you criticizing somebody else about, you exactly. can recognize that's your yes. own ego, and so you know what needs to be changed in yourself, ah, and you wouldn't even geez. have to deal with them, and you could change your mind, so you got the easiest solution, and you watch your whole experience transform before your eyes into the most cool thing you ever could imagine in your life. And that's the only thing that you deserve. Take a breath. I'm blissful.
I'm Sai Bubba. And I want to thank you for your funky, juicy, spiritual sales. You are a blessing in my life. Could you acknowledge yourself, Holy Spirit? So let's bless the love offering. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I receive, and all that I give. Divine love through us blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we give, all that we receive, and we deserve to be paid for having fun. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you for sharing. Uh, as a full-time teacher of the Course in Miracles, thank you for showing your appreciation in a way that actually helps in my life in a very practical way. Thank you. Uh, want to invite you to have a one-on-one -on -one session to get past the illusion of some of the blocks that you might think you have. I use the Course and my knowledge of astrology and numerology, so it's a whole deal together. It's as much, it's about clarity. So it's really about getting real with each other and getting some, some new ways to look at it and some new ways to look at things. Sunday at 1 o'clock is the next Course in Miracles class. So, we got a couple of minutes and so let's see what a pardon message may be as we walk out of here. <laughs> the storm that is raging is within your mind. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Thanks a lot. Name of my book. <laughs> That's gonna sell millions of copies. Yeah. Especially with true students. Yeah, I'm sitting there taking responsibility of this stuff. I get all the, all the true community, they'd be like, buy that book, boy. The storm that is raging is within your mind. It rages there because you are asleep. If you were awake to the will of God, your one true will, you could perceive no storm for there is no storm. This is the lesson we will learn together. Trust in me as your teacher. I will show you that you are at peace. The storm that rages within your mind is like cloud cover, hiding the peacefulness behind it. But the peace is within you also, and peace is your natural state. Our purpose is to blow away the clouds so that they disperse and the naturalness that is within is what is left and is seen and is witnessed. There is a thought within your mind, love it, there is a thought within your mind that says the healing that I speak of is impossible. There's a thought within your mind that says the healing that I'm speaking of cannot be accomplished. Yes. That is because there is also, that is because that is because there is also a thought in your mind that believes the cloud cover is all that you are. And it doesn't see how all that you are can be made perfect. Wow. But all that you are can be made perfect. To realize your truth, to realize your truth, you must have faith that the thought that you are the clouds is wrong. Mm -hmm. You are not your storm. Mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for coming out, Holy Spirit. Uh, yeah. woo! 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 I am not my storm. I like that. Yeah. I am not my storm. Did you get that? No. No, I didn't. Keep it. 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 Keep